lunch. You over there to lunch tomorrow. You and your brother. She gonna cook lunch for us. Ain't that classy? Huh? You gotta get a kind of thing with a lot of snacks. Well, half of people are early in the morning. And do you have anything you want to get up? Huh? 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 But tomorrow we we'll get help to eat lunch with the alligator. See you later, alligator. Don't call a truck like yeah. John, which is a question, and tell you some food again, and then we can go down yon and stay two or three nights on that dirt and boat with Tanny. Mama, I'm a friend. Dad and her. I'm sure you could, y'all could take that down for you. Go to bed. Go to bed. Go to bed. Go to eat. Go to eat. I just fed you. <laughs> <laughs> he just got out of the table and I just cleaned it up in you. At Grandma. When Grandpa looks at Grandma, somehow he doesn't see her wrinkled brow, her hair, white nail, her age, serenity. He doesn't see her flatter when night it's dark in spring, that she is slow, he'll never know of any of those things. When Grandpa looks at Grandma, somehow he doesn't hear the broken tone that now she owns, her voice seems firm and clear. Her eyes have smiled upon him, are faded blue and dim. Though time has changed, they have not changed. They look the same to him. When Grandpa looks at Grandma, forgetting she is old, he sees his bride cling to his side with half-shining gold. He sees her in the splendor of love that grows and grows. If she is great and bent to date, grandfather never knows. Sad again. Apple butter, when sky blue autumn days, with tang with flowers, and apples ripen on each orchard tree, when sweet fruits spilled on cushioned ground, well moss with last year's grass to hold it carefully. Then children came to pick the orchard store. They sorted out the best from crown and limb. They had the fruit and cut away the core and filled an iron kettle to the brim. A spicy flavor filled the autumn air as the apple butter summer thick and red. To fill stone jars some one a day to share with golden biscuit oven fresh baked bread. When nights grow crisp and where winter day is parade, I long for apple butter like my mother made. Growing old, oh let me mellow with the years and not grow old and stale. Let me go joyful and glad down life's wide sun warm trail. A heart to trust, a faith to see, how gracious older years can be. Oh, let me mellow with the years, time sweetens many things. So let her wisdom make me wise, strength my spirit's wings. Let me be thankful just for these, old house, little yard, and trees. So many things are beautiful when age has mellowed them. Old lace and ivory and wood, a fine old treasure gem. So may I grow like these to hold beauty and grace when I am old. Daisies. Daisies have a special place within the human heart, and members recall the joy that daisies can impart. Tiny girls' pants taking me, braid daisies in the hair. I weave them into chains which they insist 
they have to wear. How many little boys who picked a gold and white bouquet, which loving mothers rearranged for permanent display. The game of love me, love me not, is played with petals white. But daisies never, never tell which answer may be right. Daisies have a heart of gold, I guess that must be why. They grow profusely everywhere in fields that meet the sky. The old apple tree, how beautiful it stands in memory, that tall and spreading monarch of our yard. I see each limb o'er which I climbed in glee to get a lofty view of old Garret. Not to seem to fall on every twig and apples to compete for space to hang. No apple scents have seemed to me so big as those I shared with members of my gang. Oh, that for just one day I could go back to my hometown in boyhood summer fun and maybe even take a long sack to fill with apples when the day was done. Yeah. The family, the family's like a book, the children are the leaves, the parents are the cover that protective beauty gives. At first the pages of the book are blank and purely fair, but time soon bright memories and paint pictures there. Love is a little golden clasp that binds up the trust. Oh, break it not. Just all the leaves shall scatter and be lost. Family reunion. Grandpa, brothers, aunts, and cousins. Gathered together by the dozen. More than eager each to tell if the past year served him well. Each for reasons of his own never would have stayed alone away from what the crowd would say if he ignored, ignored reunion day. Some had come to show his skill, more declining firm of will, and says reunions are to visit or to whisper now, who is it? Off a method grown most tall, or a baby pink and small, once a year is time they feel to get clan ties on even kill. Kill me, y'all, kill. Ball game, horseshoes, what have you, swimming, boating, lots to do. Things, vacation, advertises, plus a number of surprises. Like small cousins' altercation, not the policies of nation, but the day is one for pleasure, and each member gets full measure. On one point, they all agree, meal time suits the family. Trying out new recipes, criticizing if they please, but the time the day is gone, exhaustion reaches everyone. But then the plans are very clear to return this time next year. That's all. I know that's a mess. A real sportsman. He didn't look the part at all when I met him at the gate one fall, but he is one naturally called a real sportsman. His hunting pants were patched and torn, the bottom frayed, his hat brim worn, but he was one just naturally born a true sportsman. He didn't have a fancy gun, was happy with his beat-up one. It didn't matter, for he had fun as a sportsman. He'd let you cast to a likely hole while he would fish the gravity shore. For him, it was a natural role as a sportsman. He always took the backup shot, seldom took his limit, filled the pot. One day I knew that I'd been taught by a sportsman. That reminds me so much of God. Hey, listen to that. There are two ways of spreading light. To be the candle or the mirror that reflects it. What do you ever smell wood smoke? Hmm? I like the smell of wood smoke. Damn blowing on the air. A half fire laid with pine logs 
each passerby may share. A bonfire is bright with elm leaves that crackle as they blaze, can fill an autumn twilight with a fragrant dusty haze. But smoke that climbs the chimney into the morning blue and makes a loaf to pellet in a color straight and true. Paints for me a picture that through the years I've lost of an early winter morning when air is crisp with frost. You can never tell what a, a dog or a cat or something like that will do. Uh, she skin him just like her, all but, all but his tail and the top of his, well, it did not eat. He doesn't eat all, drink all that milk, he does put food he wants. He's back there licking himself now. No, she was going down there. She was going down there. I told Jared, he told me he got to town and found a place. We didn't fly down there. We didn't fly down there. We didn't fly down there. Get out of there. Get out of there. I think, I can't think of Junior's wife's name to save my life. Junior's wife's name. I can't think of her name. She sure was glad to see us the woman. Mm -hmm. I thought she had five children, but I can't. I can't. Like he was there. All right. And she on full crib. Did you know him? No. But I, he got a, a police dog. He got three or four coon hounds or deer hounds. He got puppets. He got what else he got? Well, I got no one. You're going to get down in the road. And he said, she said, they don't go into what road. She all got very good said She didn't call it the road man. And he got cows back there. Calves that he's fattening to put on the market this fall. And uh, they are in a place just cleaning that piece of yard right there. Feeding the house up there and he feeds them. And they are, they are fat enough to kill them. And um, she said all of it, they had a lot of hogs down on the branch. Well, let me see. That son, she got living up here. His name is Simon. And she got the girl, Debbie, that got married. And Tim. And that youngest one up there. But I always thought they had five children. But where's the other one? Right. Tim was out John at Bracy working today. Right. And Samuel, he was up here somewhere. Then Junior stopped by there and he didn't have no way to get home. Well, why did he bring it? Well, it had to bring it somewhere, I don't know. So the Ben Junior was going to, he said he was supposed to be in Gasburg then. But he stopped there and Miss Fence said, well, she'd go get him. 
But Junior come by on a brand new rock truck, and he that was his second load he had carried up there, and he said that he would pick him up when he he said to be sure they have finished that footing. I said, well, you know, it's hot, I read, reading the cake and long supper. That, the heat don't matter with the machinery. <laughs> don't know what he's doing. He, uh, they would, they was all in three different places. And she had just watered them hogs. And one of them great big hogs had, God just as crossway as her stall, head up here under that and tail down here under this seat. And Junior said she'd do it every day, every day. Did you have him for me, Mom? No, he didn't have time to stop that kitchen day. Look like she appreciates them things so much. I told her that I hope they can use them. And I she said, don't you worry, I know they can use anything. So hard, but he got enough mess around that house if he would sell it to the lowest bidder, he'd have enough to build him a mansion. And that old house, I know it's supposed to fall in on it. But that's just, she don't care because she ain't no housekeeper. Well, I ain't got nothing on her. I ain't have any. You ought to done it for me. But I know that house is all, I know the, where all the pieces. I know it's all the pieces. I know when you're down, I tell her that the building no way to set up. Who good care? They can sit out under the shed or they can sit on the porch or anywhere. <laughs> they can sit out anywhere, can't they? But I don't care when you see Junior, you see him with a clean t shirt and all, and he is. Face is shining and that hair just as pretty as a picture. Well, Tim is going to be married in the Pentecostal church. Uh, she said in our church. I don't know if we're going to go. But Mr. Atkins, Mr. Atkins is going to marry. Our preacher, she said they liked him a lot, but say, um, their preacher preached his last sermon Sunday because he wasn't, he couldn't marry them no way because he had never finished school and said he won't bond it. And so uh, he's gone now to finish up his Schooling, and she said they have got to um, get somebody else, or they'll send somebody else there. But anyhow, since they were all uh, juniors and the boys, and you must act him so well, he's going to perform the ceremony 21st of August. And and says she just got Tim a uh, graduating gift, and he was down at the other night and said, she said, well, she said, well, I'm going to give you this before I have to get you another one. And he was telling them about that, telling her trip of those kind of things. And head my legs up here and I got about his brain. And you know how he come down and couldn't look. 
You know who he gonna hire? Huh? You know who Tim's gonna hire him? Yeah. You know Jack Cooper's gonna go. Took the letter by Raw for the night. Jack Coulter's his friend though. Huh? It's Jack Coulter's friend though. Oh, I said Jack Cooper's it up. Look at this good one. Frank is white. Frank is white. Uh, that was a sex crazy woman. She was talking about it. They said the one that Evelyn raised. Huh? This girl, uh, Evelyn raised her, didn't, it? didn't she? I think so. She stayed down with a man and see what she done. So, uh -oh. Well, uh, I know Junior will buy another trailer. Probably put it down that side of the other one. Well, that's two doors, boy. Now, this boy, Tim, she told me, is going to take over the hog business. Him and Junior is going in together, but he's going to... Take care of the house business. But well, she said, right now it looks like me. Oh, it look like he got some white pigs up there. I know it. Got a more big powder, what? Well, he got a big and he don't have to all that steam. He got a big goddamn hog. He, he got a big red one there at the front, the first one. That hog is what is this thing? And laying in there under them cool fans or at cool air like it. Under air condition. So and they got the lights on on the pigs. They had to let go on the beach. Because it, she said they had to keep them on for a day or two after the first bone. So I think it's a, they own slick boards. I don't see how they had any holes in it. And she said that he'll keep them in there like that till they're eight weeks old. Then he takes the pigs off and turns the hogs out. He won't take the pigs off no eight years old, then. That's what she said. Didn't did she say eight weeks or sixteen weeks? I don't know. I thought she said eight weeks. I don't know. I thought she said he let some uh, dry up and then they freak them like that. And why she asked me where I was, how I was. She asked me how you was, and she said that you was up there the other day, but she was at the garden or for someplace. I don't even know who she said was at the house. from laughing at them, that dog <laughs> slinging that <laughs> snake shit up, you know, up like that for the big one, bow like we got hanging in the pack over. I said, that dog has got a snake shit. She said, Lord have mercy. I'll be scared to come over here. So I know it's a snake over here. I said, yeah, they over here. So I hung it up on her clothes. 
She said, Lord, I wouldn't put my hand on it for nothing. I said, well, that ain't going to hurt you. Thank you. And the boy just used to work that his whole Well, I know they found uh, Junior probably furnishing a place to live, uh -huh. and they found it. He found to pay him good. That car come down the hill, I said. Well, it had on the signal light, but maybe it's cause. And she, the, the doctor said he couldn't find nothing, but it could be a virus. And they went for his emporium. Uh, Mary Alice thought she had broke off a piece of her tooth. Uh, Alice thought she had broke off an edge of her teeth. And they went down to uh, uh, Janice's husband to look at it, and he said that it wasn't broke and it was all right, that he would file it a little bit. It was just a rough edge. Uh, They come back while we was over there, and Alice, I think she was both playing. She has, um, she had a headache, and she looked. Yeah, said she was coming over here to settle up with me. I said, well, come on. I said, I still having to buy chicken feed, so it'll be good when I get it. She and Clifton went down to his aunt's today. And he said, looked like they had had a little rain down by them. And everything looked green and much better than it did up here. Um, that girl, that this aunt's daughter that lived there with them and had them two girls, the oldest one is getting married sometime in the last of July. No, she's going to be married at the little church up there next to the highway where they go to, go to church. And Mary Lee and said, they told them they was going to run. them to be sure to come. And uh, she said, well, uh, she said, but we ain't got no air condition in it, and I hope it don't be hot as it is now. So, Mary Lee and said she'd like to go down there for that. Huh? I don't know, 